Hello world, welcome or welcome back to my channel. Today we are going to be looking at creating a slider in Webflow that has some cool transitions as we switch from one slide to another. So let me show you guys what I mean. All right. So right here we have some text, we have an image, and when we switch to the next slide, we sort of have a fade over and we have new text and new image. Essentially we're just working on creating a different sort of transition to make it more appealing to the end user. Now, um, in a real life use case, this might be used in a product slideshow. So you might have some text for a product and then the image, right? So let me show you guys that one more time, right? So image text, and that is our slider. So let's get right into making this in Webflow. I have a blank project in here. I have some images that I will have um, uploaded down in the description box for you below if you want to use these images. Okay, so the first thing that we're going to do is grab the Webflow default slider. Okay, um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure it has a width and a height of 100%. So this slider or 100 bh so that it's taking up the full screen okay perfect now what i'm also going to do is make sure that it doesn't have a background color so we can just we can just leave it at transparent like that and that's pretty much it for our slider let's get right into this mask and into our first slide okay now inside this slide we're going to create a div that's going to hold all of our content so we're going to appropri appropriately name this slide content wrapper, okay? So this can have a width of 100% and a height of 100%. So it's just going to be our whole um, entire slide, right? So now we're going to set this to be display flex because we want some of the items to align in a particular way. Um, especially we want our text to appear, oh, my bad. <laughs> we want the text to appear on the left side of the screen while being centered vertically, right? So um, what we're going to do is we're just going to set a line center and justify to the start, okay? Now, inside of here, let's drag in our heading right there. Um, now, as you can see here, our arrow is actually interfering with that a little bit. Um, you can see the icon. If we change the font color, we'll be able to look at it. But we'll come back and fix that in just a second. So then let's work on this. So our heading can be called product heading and we're going to make it very very big i'm going to say maybe 10 vw or actually even 15 okay and i'm going to make sure that it's all capitalized like that and then we're going to make sure that the line height is one okay perfect now for this we're going to use a special kind of font we're not going to pick one that's already present here and if you've been on my channel before, you know that I usually select a Google font. But we're going to go a step further with the Google font itself. We're going to pick a font. Uh, I'm not sure if I remember the name. Let's see. Okay. So we're going to pick a font that is a variable font. Now, a variable font, um, I'll link a blog post in the description box below. But a, ver a variable font is actually a font that... Um, or a type of font that has been created to reduce the amount of um, font files you needed. Like in the past, you needed different font files for every um, every sort of uh, like weight that you wanted. So depending on whether or not it was bold or where, whether it was light, right? But variable fonts, you don't need any of that. You could just have one um, encompassing font file that you can use for all of your variants. Now, if you just add this, to your um, from Google Fonts, and if you hit Add Font um, in Webflow, and if you just reload, what's going to happen is um, with Webflow's new feature, they released a font variations feature, right? But if you select Hinkin Graphics, our variable font, um, and you try to mess with any of the settings here, you actually can't do it. I'm not really sure what the problem is, but it only really works, the font variations, if you go ahead and you go and download the font file from Google Fonts. So I'll show you guys how to do that really quick. So if I go to fonts.google.com and I just find the font, 
that I want, so this one right here. And if I, this isn't just a normal one selected, but I'm gonna go ahead and hit download family. If I upload it in here, and you can give it a name, I'm just gonna call it that. And if we hit upload font file, like this, right? Now if we go back and if we refresh, we are going to be able to use font variation. So that way we don't have to go ahead and get each and every font type. What we can actually do is go through font variations and then we can just change it from here. Okay, so now that we have that done, we're gonna have a really bold heading and then we're also gonna increase the letter spacing. So I'm gonna make it something really big, like maybe 25 pixels, not two, 25, right? Now on our first slide, it actually says Iron Man. So let's go ahead and put that text in there. Iron from line break. Okay. Now, we want to keep a little bit of spacing to the left and a little bit of spacing to the right of our div, of our slide. So it's really simple. All we have to do is in our slide content wrapper, we can just give it some padding. So maybe 10 VW of padding on the left and the same on the right. This just keeps things uh, evenly spaced out. Okay. Now, the next thing that we're gonna do is create a different image wrapper to put our, um, our image in. Because what we're gonna do is we're gonna position this image over um, the text and then we're gonna center it, right? So we're gonna call this, we can call this um, image wrapper. And what we're gonna put in here is, uh, we're just going to give it a width of 100% and a height of 100%. And then we're gonna position it absolutely. Okay, this doesn't make a difference off the bat, but if we go back to our slide here, and if we set this, so this is automatically set to uh, position relative, but if we go back to our slide content wrapper, and if we set this to relative, and then we have our image wrapper take up this space, if we hit our first option right here, it's gonna position the image wrapper on top of the text. Now what this creates is, if I just drag in my image here, so I'll put that over there. Okay, and I can just call this image. Um, I'll give it a width of 20%. This positions it over, right? Now we want the image to be centered. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna do image wrapper and then we'll set some flex on it. So just align it to the middle. And I'm gonna give it some margin to the left just so there's a little bit of space. But that's all we're gonna do there. Okay, perfect. Now, um, all we need to do on the styling part is just copy and paste this onto our next slide and change some of the colors around. So that's really easy. I'm just gonna grab the slide and I'm gonna set a background color on it, like that one. And to be able to better see our product heading, all I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna make sure that the text is white, the color of the text is white, and then I'm gonna go to my opacity here and I'm just gonna set this to like 15% maybe 20%, and I think 15 looks better, like that. So you can barely see it, but it's still there. Okay, now let's copy and let's paste into slide two. And if we just switch over in our settings here to slide two, is that it? Okay, there, that's slide two. All we need to do is here is grab our slide, change the background color to this blue for Captain America. Okay, so um, it's not letting us edit this uh, heading right here only because this image wrapper is positioned on top of it, right? So we can just turn it off or hide it for one second just until we can type this name in, so Captain America. And then we can display flex again. And I'll just replace this image with our picture of Captain America. Perfect. And we're gonna get rid of this slide now. That's really easy. All we have to do is just hit Okay, perfect. Now, uh, let's get into creating the actual animation. So I'm gonna grab the our first slide and we can create a new interaction for slider change. And I'm gonna call this interaction, at least our first one is gonna be called slide in view. Okay, so now let's go back and sort of dissect what happens whenever I open up a new slide in our finished product, right? Um, okay. So first we get our image, and our image is sort of faded out, but it comes in, right? So if I go back and play it again, um, the image comes in, the text comes in, 
and they sort of scale and then get bigger and then they stop, right? So how do we achieve this effect well? Um, first things first, let's have the image start at a different position and have a different scale. So that for that, we're just going to grab the image and I'm actually going to hide it because we don't want it to be shown by default, right? Uh, and then what I'm going to do is set the scale so it's smaller. So maybe I'll make it 0.75 or let's put this after just so we can see. Okay, so the scale is 0.75 and we're going to move it. So let's move it maybe 20% to the right in terms of X position. Actually, why not? Let's crank it up to 50. Okay, great. Now, what else do we want? Um... We also want our heading to be moving in the opposite direction, right? So for that, what we can do is we can scale our heading as well. We can maybe make it scale 2.5, right? And we can also have it move to negative 50%, right? So negative 50%. And then we can also have its opacity go down so that it sort of fades in, right? So 0%. This is the starting position, by the way. Um, and then we also want to hide it. So let's just hide it. Okay. Now I'm just going to hit shift and grab all of these. And I'm going to make sure that it's set as initial state. So this is how we want it to be initially. Now to actually animate all of these, what we're going to do is we can start with the product image again. So we can grab it. First, we want to move it back. Right, so it was moved 50%. Let's move it back to its original state, so 0%. Um, and then scale it back to 1. So scale of 1. Uh, let's show it, because that's sort of important. Uh, like that. Perfect. Now, as for our heading, let's go ahead and work on that as well. First thing is we can bring the opacity up, so to 15%, like we have before. Okay, uh, I don't think we need to hide it actually, let's just bring the opacity up. Um, and then we can move it, so move it back 0%. We're just essentially just doing the opposite of what we did in the first step, so 0%. And then let's go ahead and scale it back up again, so back to 1, and that's pretty much it. So now if we play this through, Okay, so we have the startings of our animation, and we just need to add some easing to it to make it look a little bit better. So I'm going to grab this, and uh, the first thing, and I'm just going to hit shift again, and then I'll grab all of these. And what we can do is we can set some easing to it. The one that I personally chose was I picked ease in out. And I think this looks pretty good. Okay, perfect. I'll maybe make it last a little bit longer, let's say... 0.8 seconds, so it's a little bit, takes a little bit longer. Okay, perfect. Okay, great. That looks good. Now, let's just go ahead and apply that to our second slide as well. So, slider change, we have our slide in view. Okay, so we have that, but before um, we're actually done, we need to create some sort of animation um, that needs to occur when the slider is out of view, right? So, what happens when you click on the next slide, right? Now, for slide out of view, it's really not that complicated. All you need to do um, is just sort of use what you said for the initial state and just sort of copy paste it, right? So I'm going to grab our first thing for initial state. I'm going to hit shift and I'll do command C or command or control C to copy. And then I'll paste it right in here. Just paste. That does not work. Never mind. It should be working, but that's okay. No worries, we'll just do the whole thing over again. So, like we were saying before, the image has to be hidden, right? It has to be moved 50%, so move it 50%. Um, it has to be scaled down to 0.75, I think we said. Um, okay, now as for the text, just grab that. The text will be moved negative 50%. Um, it will have an opacity of zero, and then it will also be scaled, oh, oh, not move, it will also be scaled, okay, what is going on? It's not what I need to click, it'll also be scaled to 0 0.5. Okay, 
Perfect. So now that we have that, let's test it out. Let's add that to slide two as well. There, and let's try. Okay, so nothing shows up. Let's hit the next button. Okay. Okay, so something is definitely happening. Um, okay, so to sort of have the slides overlap, so go on top of each other, um, and sort of fade in, what we're gonna do is we're just gonna grab our slider, and if we go to settings right here, our animation is set to slide, but if we set our animation to cross fade, and if we make it last a little bit longer, so maybe 1,000, and now if we try, there we go, okay. We're facing some problems, but we'll fix the problems. Um, okay, so what's not happening right now? The images are not hiding. Okay. So, how do we fix that? Let's go ahead, let's look. Image hidden, and then we show it again. Okay, good. And then when we... So this is a problem that we're facing right now. We get sort of like a blank screen, right? Um, that now, essentially why that's happening is because in our slide in view, we set our initial state to basically have everything be hidden, right? There's a really simple fix to this, to this right? So to our first slide, the slide that the user first sees, all we're going to do is we're just going to add another um, trigger, and we're going to call this um, slide one in view, okay? Now, all this is going to have is just, is just make sure that our image is showing up, okay? So we're gonna hit image, and then we'll have it show up, and then we'll have this be set as our initial state. Okay, so now if we go back in here, there we go, so our image is showing up. Now if we hit next, there we go. Okay, I think our fade is lasting for a little bit too long. Let's try, let's leave that at 500, and then we'll pick something else. Let's do ease in out for this one as well. Okay, great. Great, so let's look at that once more. Okay, there. Um, really, okay, great. Now, the one thing that we do have to fix is, or change, is our um, arrows. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm gonna grab the left arrow, and I'm just gonna give it a class, and all I'm gonna do is make sure that it has a width and height. So let's say maybe four em, that's too much, three, 2EM and 2EM, so it's that big. Uh, I'll give this the same class, and I'll give it a little bit of margin to the left. So, margin to the left, margin to the right. That might be too much. Let's get some small margins. Let's maybe give it a margin of 5VW on both sides instead. Great. Um, now, to make it circular, all we're going to do is just give it a border, and then we're going to give it a border radius of 50%, and then we're just going to change the color to 1, perfect, and now if we try this out, okay, what happened there, there we go, next, next, and perfect, okay, so that's it for today's video, hope you guys enjoyed it, if you did, leave a like, um, comment down below any other future video ideas you'd like to see, and of course, subscribe. Well, that's it. I'll see you guys next time. Bye!